wimp out first. <laughs> Crazy Charlie did about five years in the slam because he got charged with murdering some guy. Crazy Charlie went to jail and he found God. And God spared Crazy Charlie from a life sentence in jail and Crazy Charlie owes it to God and he goes through all of the jails and he preaches the gospel and he basically is quite a gentleman and he's nobody to screw with. And when we went to chapel, the kids were all joking around, Pops, you going to chapel? I said, oh, hell yeah. He says, Pops, you're a badass. What you want to go to chapel for? I said, let me tell you something, my man. You can always learn something, and I'll tell you, one of the best places to learn it is at chapel, so why don't you come on down and you might learn something. We go down there, and who do I see? Crazy Charlie. I hadn't seen Crazy Charlie for years. He looked at me, I looked at him, he said, what the hell are you doing here? I said, so I don't want to talk about it, Crazy Charlie. <laughs> The guy turns around to me, he says, Pops, is there anybody in this joint you don't know? I says, I'll tell you what, this guy is a guy I would listen to. Because he's serious. The man is serious, and he found God, and he's going to try and help you find God. And, and in the end, you will have peace. Well, with this gentleman, this one bank robber, found this gentleman in between myself and Crazy Charlie. He found God, and I wish you could see the peace on his face. He was in a lot of trouble. And uh, we did his paperwork for him, we helped him, and uh, basically they, they redid his whole program, and because he found God, they, they decided to put him out on lifetime parole. He made restitution, he gave the money back. He, he changed his whole life. His whole life was changed just from that instant. So I'm telling you, you go in, when I go into jail, it's hilarious, because it's like the jailers don't even know how to act and it's like I the one jailer told me when I left he shook my hand he says I'm gonna miss you pops he says they call me pops because I'm older I was a little teed off when they called me pops the first time so I told this kid he said uh, I said what's with the pops I said I bet you can't even do 25 push-ups he said you probably right pops can you boom down I went 25 out and here's how I'll raise your 25 and here's another 25 he said, Pops, you in good shape. I said, I'm going to show you how good a shape I'm in. You keep calling me Pops. He says, no, 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 no. You don't understand, Pops. He said, if you're an older gentleman in the joint, they treat you with courtesy. They call you Pops. That's just out of courtesy. I said, oh, I guess you can call me Pops, and that's cool. So don't you ever think that I'm getting old. So I'll fool you. So they laughed. When I left, they lined up to shake my hand, and... Uh, even the jailer said he was going to be sorry to see me go because I was helping so many people and people were getting their lives together. And so when I go to jail, it's kind of unique. I actually get a vacation. I got the top bunk and I laid on the window and let God's sun shine in my face and I got a suntan and guys would say, Pops, why do you climb up on the top bunk? I says, man, I'm out on the beach getting sun and rays. What are you doing? He says, you know, Pops, you're something else. You're going to make, you in jail and you're going to make, I said, I'm laying out here on the beach. What you talking about? I'm laying on my bed right next to the window and the sun comes right through and I'm on the beach. What are you talking about? Getting a suntan. So you got to make the best of where you're at. No matter what. It keeps your spirits up. And the bottom line is this. I wouldn't have been in jail if I could have more effectively argued my constitution. I ended up having to do a brief from the jail. 28 pages. I sharpened the pencil on the phone, on the wall. Here it is. This is a 28-page motion to dismiss. Well, this is more than that. This right here. This right here. I mean, this is all from hand, long hand. And when we got to court, the judge looked at it. He goes, sir, are you an attorney? I says, no. He says, uh, he says, uh, you've been to law school? I says, no, sir. He says, you did this from jail? I says, yes, sir. He says, you did this from jail from memory? I says, yes, sir. It's rather extensive. It's huge. Meanwhile, the prosecutor kicks in. She says, Judge, do I got to answer this? He goes, oh, hell yeah. This guy is kind of like this guy on Night Court on TV and Channel 2, kind of flippant. And he says, oh, hell yeah, counselor. He says, what's this, a new hobby you just took up? He says, uh... This guy even did his own proposed order. I don't even have to fill out an order. And he says, not only that, I want it done by 8 o'clock Monday morning. So all weekend, she had to go to the law library and answer all this stuff. She was not a happy camper. So then she uh, proposed that I have to have a shrink. Check my bolts out to see if my batteries are charged. Because if you defend your constitution, you got to be a crazy uh, turkey. And she found out I'm pretty well squared away. <laughs> 
I just argue my constitution. I asked the judge, I says, has it gotten this bad yet, judge? Where they got to toss you in the nut house because you defend your constitution? He says, not in my court. Okay, we got a question here? Um, I've heard tell of uh, people uh, raising the, uh, saying um, they want to base their argument on a constitutional right, and I've heard of judges speaking up and saying, well, the constitution has no place in my courtroom. How can they even think about that? Boy, we're, that is a, that is a very ser serious statement. Because what that judge just did in an open court of law under Title 18 United States Code Section 2381 is he just committed an act of treason. See, the judge is sworn under Article 11 in this state, Paragraph 1, that he will uphold the Constitution of the United States and move as most immediately as is practicable to defend that Constitution. And a violation of that act would be capital felony treason under the people and government of the United States of America, and he would be subject upon conviction to be hung by the neck. That's is it how possible serious. if the uh, defendant had a driver's license and they were trying to argue a traffic matter and they were kind of in the system already and right. raised the constitutional objection that the judge might say right. it doesn't apply? Well, here's, here's how we start a lot of these traffic cases, and I'll, I'll get right into that. The issue, when you first walk before a traffic court, you see, when they merged these courts together in 1963, they screwed up. They, they, wanted to, they wanted to lay off half the judges, see, and they only wanted to have one building. So what they did is they merged the traffic court, per se, or, the, or that docket, into the criminal court docket. And when they did that, they didn't check the rules, you see. And when they didn't check the rules, they didn't allow for jurisdictional challenges between the two courts. So what happens now is you come before the court, and there's several ways you can come before the court. Now, this gentleman here is correct. When he's talking about you have a, dri a driver's license, you have entered into a contractual relationship with the state. In other words, it's not a lawful contract because you cannot enter into an unlawful contract. You understand? It is a contract, though, because it's recognized as a contract. Because you have voluntarily entered into this contract, you agreed to all of the rules in their law book for that contract. Now, this is what we call admiralty and maritime jurisdiction or artificial jurisdiction. And it's a rather heavy argument going into Erie Railroad versus Tompkins and uh, McCulloch versus Maryland, and we'll go into that in depth at the end uh, of this program, but I wanted to share with you briefly. When you sign your driver's license, and especially today, and your voter's registration card, you will notice a little note right under your signature where you agree to the acceptance of the duality of citizenship of not only at the common law, but you accept the national jurisdiction under Admiralty and Maritime Jurisdiction, which allows you to be sucked into all of these Uniform Commercial Code requirements. And this is a very serious thing you're signing here. You don't understand it, but you just sold all your constitutional rights down the sewer when you signed that document. So when you sign it, my honest advice, and this is from experience, you sign the thing, and right at the end of your name, you write UD. U period, D period, at the end of your name, and underneath your name, you write 1-207 without prejudice. Now, what that does, it says, I'll be glad to accept your, uh, your ridiculous privilege. I don't really need to, but I will just to keep myself from being in trouble with the cops. And I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, uh, we'll exercise our Uniform Commercial Code caveat that allows us to keep all of our constitutional rights. In other words, my signature is not really a signature of contract. It's a signature of convenience that allows me to get a piece of paper to put in my pocket for identification purposes that allows me to sign my checks and do whatever I gotta do. But it doesn't in any way make any admissions or confessions or require me to participate in any of your rule book schemes under your Admiralty and Maritime Tontine scheme. Now to tell you how crazy it was, I just got asked by an attorney how he would defend, how he would defend a program where a gentleman that he was uh, defending was accused of hijacking a car. And that they were claiming that because the car is made all over the world and all over the United States, that the parts, even though they're assembled at one point, they are in what is called the, the uh, interstate jurisdiction. And that because of that, this, car, this crime was now a federal crime. You understand? This is how far-reaching this thing has gotten. And when this gentleman signed his driver's license, he had no idea that he was entering into this thing and waiving all of his God-given constitutional rights. 
and that he was no longer a